news today we're gonna do an exciting dark topic far out antarctica part three so this is a creepypasta that showed up on the paranormal forum on 4chan and I'm, I'm just going to read through this and post relevant pictures and links in our videos and whatnot. And you can decide for yourself what to think of it. Of course, take this all with a grain of salt. This is just some dude on the internet talking about what some dude on the internet wrote. So, of course, this could be nonsense. But a lot of it does seem to line up with some stuff that we know in modern history and in ancient history. So, I, I'm, of course, just considering it. I'm not at all thinking this is 100% true, but I do find it very fascinating and very entertaining. This shit alone about Antarctica could be so many different movie scripts. And it, you almost think about like what are movies and what, what role they play, and this kind of gets into that. So get yourself some food, get comfy, and enjoy. This should be a, a wild ride. Okay guys, that my post as you will. I will be refraining from posting this for some time, even back in the older days of Antarctica on X and Pole several years ago. I figure now is a good time as any. I stopped myself from posting because I feared gang stalking or being traced, if there was any truth to what I'm about to post. Now I just think, fuck it. This post will most likely go unnoticed anyways and gang stalking is just an irrational fear for myself. My knowledge of Antarctica comes from my best friend of 50 years now. Though we grew up together, we grew up in very different conditions. He was part of the rich family who owned one of the largest factories in my hometown. I was the opposite. Just a naive kid playing around town when we first met. We were best friends then and I still consider him my best friend now, despite him traveling around the world, going to Princeton, and doing whatever he wanted. The point is, he is a 31st Mason and has lived a life way beyond anything I can imagine. Despite all of this, he always comes to visit. Sometimes several times a year, sometimes not for years. But when he does, we usually get smashed and trashed, hookers, blow. Even he brought me DMT and other crazy shit. Okay, enough. Back to the story. Time for the goods. This comes from him. His story hasn't changed, though he only told me this roughly five years ago and told me shit would be happening in less than a decade. This starts with religion, and at first I rolled my eyes. But as he talked more, it sent shivers up and down my spine. So the Masons have been in charge of controlling and releasing information to the public at reasonable levels. That is what he told me the majority of his Masonic duty entails. And the first piece of media they altered was the Bible. A major part of the Bible was cut from Revelations, revealing where the Antichrist and the Beast would emerge from. He said the section they cut out was the most important. Wow, scary trips. Keck is listening. Okay, so the revelation stated that the last Antichrist would be the total opposite of Jesus, spreading disease from an old age which turned most humans into zombies or some weird shit, he said. Anyways, he said this Antichrist was trapped in a frozen wasteland with magnificent buildings and was being held captive by kilometers of ice. He doesn't know exactly if this is an individual. Even the Masons think it is a virus of some sort. The Bible didn't specifically state, but he said, this is where the saying comes from when hell freezes over. Hell is already frozen over. Once hell is defrozen, then real hell will be unleashed. He told me these temples in Antarctica have been explored by a group of people in control in the government. The same group is doing crowd control methods all around the world. Have been digging, hoping to find this antichrist buried in Antarctica because some believe it is the key to immortality. For another small section of the Bible did refer to the everlasting life, Garden of Eden, being hidden right beside this Antichrist. And in order to bring about the last days, it had to happen anyways. So teams have been digging, blowing up shit, covering up, stopping visits. Though he said you can visit the outside portions of Antarctica, only those who know will ever get to see these temples. And constantly destroying any information leaked from this expedition. He told me, several years ago, some Russian thought he found a portion of the immortality and injected himself with an ancient virus they discovered in a vial in one of the temples. He even cringed when talking about this story, and said the guy instantly turned blue and froze over. Everyone ran out, and when they returned, his body was gone. Now they only work in those giant radioactive suits. He said they had to replace him with a body double to avoid drawing notice or some shit in his real life. He went into great detail about how big and complicated those temples, and he calls it a 
giant big city expand across the entire continent. He said from one temple where you enter, there are hundreds of rooms, hallways, traps, all types of symbols and shit on the walls, large books of ancient texts no one can read, vials upon vials of random liquids, which they can't even remotely identify. But he said most contain living organisms in those vials, and they protected behind large traps, trap shit like you see in Indiana Jones. He said they've already lost over 500 people exploring, and now they're using robots and drones. But shit is so complicated, you have to move blocks to open doors, solve riddles, I don't know. He said it is truly a giant mouse trap, like a level from The Legend of Zelda. There are keys and legends on the walls, and a single room can contain up to a hundred different keys for solving to open a trap. It's crazy shit, and they have the smartest people working on it, and they send in third world people to go open the doors when they think they've solved it. It's shit I still don't know what to make of. So some other stuff he told me. Most movies and books are representing what they think will happen when it is discovered, like Transformers with the Frozen but forgot his name. All those zombies movies, and all this other shit in the media. I'm not sure if you guys care. Essentially, I have crazy stories from him from all these years. A lot of examples I forget because of our drunken binges, but this is the gist of it. I don't know if it confirms anything for you, but this is just my two cents. Just for you, Anon, I will type out everything I know. He said Game of Thrones, one of the only shows I watch so I can relate to what he said, shows what they think will happen when they discover this Antichrist. They aren't sure it is, but the White Walkers are meant to get normies ready to fight against the possible zombie outbreak, and why they think it is soon. A quote he kept repeating from the Bible was, After the War of Wars and after the Winter of Winters is when everything would happen. He thinks the War of Wars was from World War II up until now, non-stop fighting across the Earth. And the Winter of Winters refers to the ice of Antarctica decreasing and opening up parts of the island that were still frozen. Another crazy fact he said they know is there will be Jesus, a Christ, right beside the Antichrist, and you will get to choose when it is first discovered. He thinks it will be two vials beside each other, and you will have to drink one. After the Russian, they put in a ban from ingesting any shit from these temples to prevent anything from happening. It's truly a clusterfuck of arguments because everyone wants to be the first to keep discovering, but they are in disagreement of what to do with all these random vials they keep finding. He said each other has random living organisms inside of it, and it's bacteria and viruses we have never seen before. Shit which makes apples rot in minutes and monkeys explode diarrhea and shaking to death. But the coolest thing he said was there is a giant frozen skeleton in golden armor in one of the temples holding the skull of a giant reptile, which looks to be over 30 feet tall, the giant, and the reptile head is roughly the size of a van. It's incredible to see and unbelievable. He mentioned some show on TV called The 100. I haven't seen it, but he said the leader takes a chip or drinks something which gives them the recollection of all the knowledge previously and lets them control the others with their minds. This is what they think is in the immortality vial. So the media and shit they keep releasing is just them theorizing everything and making entertainment out of it. It's funny because it's the truth in a way, he said, and the public just eats it up. On a long binge, he did tell me everything they found so far. It must have been hours he was talking, and lots of shit just went through me because it was so unbelievable. Aside from the traps, the walls are covered in symbols and images. Shit which has supposedly happened, shit which hasn't happened, and shit just no one knows what to think about. He said these images, though drawn in some ink which looks like it's printed on a piece of paper, has predicted many events recently, and the Illuminati card game, this piece of 4chan I do enjoy threads about, were actually pictures of the walls on these temples. He said they look so lifelike, even though being drawn. They had to release them in a game because these events were coming true over time, and they keep doing doing so which is crazy and scary for them it is just another piece of media which flies over the heads of the population but for them it is a giant timeline he said there's tons of shit hidden in media which they find and subtly hide but it doesn't matter to anyone because we just we just keep consuming shit and not caring nor would we care unless we saw it in real life i was amazed when he mentioned this game because i actually own it and took it out and we played it for hours he explained a shit ton of cards which happened and cards which they think will be happening soon. He said each and every card is a picture from the wall and nothing is made up. So which are the ones that he thinks are going to happen next? He said the card game is a giant timeline leading up to the end, her discovery of the Antichrist. 
Every time they open a new room or a different section in the temple, it's littered with more images. You mentioned a shit ton of other games, movies, shows, books, and other stuff which they hid, but I can't remember all the names. They aren't sure, but they constantly hide these hints on TV. Even for them, it's like a giant mess of information they're constantly working on. He said the pictures are one thing. There are hundreds of books and scripts which contain shit no one understands. He educated me on the Voynich Manuscript, which is one of the books which they found and made its way to the public. No one knows what it means or anything, but they think it was ancient methods for making medicine or other stuff no one actually knows. He mentioned like 9-11 was in the temples several times, and they did attempt to prevent it, but somehow there was a group in the government which made it happen because of interest. They even hinted on The Simpsons and several other shows that were coming. But the public can't make connections or believe anything. He says the more shit they release, the less likely the majority of the population believes. Instead, they focus on working, shitting, eating, and making money. It's just nothing but entertainment. So what you're saying is Conan the Barbarian is a documentary. Fire and Ice is a documentary. Deus Ex is a documentary. Rhapsody is a documentary. The Lord of the Rings is a documentary. Nirvana is a documentary and Odin was right? This is awesome. That's what he said. He said there is a connection between how much shit from the temples they put into the media, the more likely it is to be successful. Even the symbols, which are littered across all media, Illuminati symbols, come from these temples and other temples from the world. But in these temples they appear hundreds of times in random order like a language. So they just throw it out into the media and we buy it up. Not even they know what they truly mean. But they just keep filling our media with it and we just keep consuming it. They have no idea whether these stories happened or will be happening either. There is no order in how they appear in the temples. It's all scattered, so they are scared that there are beasts hidden deep down in the temples. Another interesting thing he said was you cannot look through the walls. So normally they could use imaging and radar and other technologies to map out temples. These ones just appear as one giant black blimp with all technology they attempt to use. They are literally mice in a mousetrap making their way through this maze, piecing together lots of info and hoping to get lucky. The amazing part, he said, of the temple is how complicated it is constructed. From the 500 people who died, 400 are still missing. So the puzzles and shit you do to open doors actually open up traps where you fall into some shit. And those 400 have disappeared into the temple somewhere and not a single one has been found yet. They fear they have become infected with the zombie virus, for there are symbols showing death all over the temple. But they fear once they reach a certain level they will find all of those lost in a weird state, dead or infected or something. Also there is no noise in the temple. When you talk it is a very flat tone, and there is no noise outside. It's like a dead silence which makes it really fucking scary to work in. Most of those who are deciphering will not enter the temples under any circumstances. That's why they send the third worlders to go in and try to open shit up. Seti was no fool. I think perhaps we should let the diggers open it. Hmm? Oh, I think we should listen to the good doctor, Henderson. Yeah, sure. Let them open. Ifta, Ifta. They stick to my delato. Sieda! 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 Yeah, he said it looks incredible, like a man holding up a dog by its tail. It's almost the full length of him, but the skull is huge. He said all the most important stuff has been removed. They kept the fluff which keeps people calm and going to church. Everything in the Bible is true with many parts missing. He actually mentioned that Noah's Ark was based on Antarctica and they expect to find some evidence of it once the snow melts. A part he mentioned was that the Antichrist was at war with God and that is why he got frozen. But he said God isn't what we think he is. He's not a man but a living organism capable of hive mind like thoughts which can see the future. So God, the spirit hive mind, warned Noah of the flood ice age coming but didn't warn the Antichrist. I don't know because it went over my head as he was talking, but he said these two have been at war for a long time, and humans are just the vessels which they use. That is why Christ and the Antichrist will be located near each other, and he said the Matrix told the story as the blue pill and the red pill. One will be the Antichrist and bring about death, the other will be life. Though he admitted they have zero clues as to which is which and where they are in the temples, 
There's a giant power struggle in those working on the temples because many are offering to be test dummies, thinking they will get immortality, but many are scared about what will come. I don't know, Anon. I'm trying to recall word for word what he told me, and I'm doing my best. He said it was like the body is the temple or some shit. He said you are what you eat, like you consume a virus and it can control you without you knowing. That is what he was trying to tell me. Christ and the Antichrist were. And that is why Christ actually translates to body. So Antichrist is antibody, something which goes against us. I don't have the answers you seek, just some information on what is going on. And so that'll conclude the whole creepypasta of all that we have from this Anon posting. So you can see how it relates sort of to the other Antarctica video and the other creepypasta talking about it. Now maybe of course you got to throw out that it's all just sort of silly and that it's just somebody LARPing and just playing off of what other people have already said and playing off of people's like basic fears and ideas and thoughts. But it is really exciting. It's hard to deny how exciting it is and how uh, fascinating it is, especially when you consider mud flood and other theories and whatnot. Now, of course, uh, this doesn't this doesn't negate any religion that you might hold. If anything, I think it would expand it if you just added this as a possibility, as a possible crayon to your crayon box, another color that you could, another shade that you could draw and paint a picture with. Now, your relationship with God, your relationship with Christ, and whoever or the universe you live in, whatever you want to call that relationship, that's your own relationship. And this should have nothing really to, to get in the way of that. So I, I have my faith. I'm strong in my faith. And I just consider these ideas mostly as entertainment, but also just as, hmm, that's fascinating. And not much else. So don't let it like make you go crazy. It's definitely uh, some sort of schizo paranoia in a way but it doesn't have to lead you to that path so yeah hopefully you can just uh enjoy this and not take it to too seriously but maybe we'll find out later on and maybe soon just how serious this could be so if you enjoy this type of content you can check out my description i have ways that you can support me shout out to the people on patreon they requested this video and shout out to all the people in the comments who requested this and shout out to my own personal friends and the tricking community, the martial arts community, who have also been asking me to finish and get part three out. So this is part three. If you'd like to see more of this content, I'm sure I could find more information on Antarctica and things like the mud flood and whatnot, more far out theories now, on top of doing the actual news. <laughs> and maybe one day they'll, they'll slap together, they'll like overlap and the actual news will be well, yeah, have you guys heard that the fallen one has risen in Antarctica? What are we going to do about it? I don't know. Good thing we have that 20-foot wall on the border of Mexico because we got a a 70-foot titan that just rose up. But this one, this whole theory is talking more about uh, vials and chemicals and organisms. And I, the interesting part was it talks about you are what you eat. And I absolutely believe that. I absolutely believe that a lot of our cravings, a lot of our thoughts even, our, and our moods, are determined by our gut biome. I feel like this has been proven in science somewhere or another, but I, I don't have the information directly on me. But I know that a lot of scientists have talked about things like fecal transplants, or if you take a, a very athletic and healthy person's poop, <laughs> to say it crudely, and you make a pill out of it, and you give it to somebody who's not in shape, then without working out, that person with the new gut biome will suddenly start to lose weight and to will get in more shape if they don't change anything just because their gut biome now reflects somebody's gut biome who did take care of themselves so really consider what you're eating really consider what they put into the food I mean whenever possible they legally can't uh, call something organic I feel like there's a push in the media to make organic food seem like stupid but they legally can't say or use that word. That's why they always use words like natural or all natural or free free range. All these other words that don't mean organic. They have no legal binding. The FDA is very odd. Like, I mean, like the Tic Tac is like 99% sugar, but it says zero sugar. Like just that whole idea is expanded upon. So really consider what you're eating. Try to spend, spend a couple extra bucks. Get the organic meat if you can. You'd be surprised. Exercise, work out, take everything in here with a grain of salt. As always, call your mom. Maybe don't tell her all this stuff. She might get scared. When in, when in doubt, don't don't throw crazy theories at your mom. 
<laughs> or at your loved ones if you care about them. If we're fighting an info war, we really are. And we have to be con like considerate of other people's psyche and not just like throwing them some of the most bizarre schizophrenic ideas out there possible. Spread love, you know, spread positivity, be optimistic. Because even this theory, it has optimism within it. It almost reminds me of, uh, what was that, The Last Crusade, Indiana Jones, where you have to choose which cup to drink from. You have chosen wisely. So try to choose wisely in your life. Choose wisely when you eat your food. Choose wisely when you decide what to do, what information you consume. Stay vigilant. Stay active. Call your mom. Peace. If you enjoyed it, check out the description.